Hey everyone, Luke here from Bedford Camera and Video, and I've got Brandon from Westcott. We're going to be going over the FJ400. So Brandon, tell me a little bit about this. So the FJ400 is a 400 watt second strobe. Um, it's got basically every bell and whistle that you would expect in a strobe unit. TTL, okay. manual, um, high speed sync, freeze sync, you name it. Um, but it's, it, as you can see here in this color screen, really user friendly menu. And it's uh, a nice full color screen, like I mentioned. Um, it's really intuitive. You can change everything from the mode, the sync style, the channels, the groups. Um, you see right there it has its ID, how you can change the ID. That indicates that it can be used with Canon speed lights, and we'll get a little bit more on that in, in a little bit. Um, it does have, you know, you can turn on and off the audio, turn on and off the monitoring lamp from this. And what is worth noting is it is a daylight monitoring lamp. So that's kind of okay. cool because it matches. A, it matches. You have a daylight output. Why not match that with a daylight yeah, absolutely. Uh, monitoring lamp? We've got a mask mode, and what's really cool about the mask mode, Luke, is that um, it allows photographers to make really simple composites. So basically, it requires at least two strobes, okay. okay? And you basically set the sequence on the strobe, and you say, I want this one to fire in the first shot, and then I want this one to fire on the second shot. Gotcha. And so, if I was photographing you on a white background, and I wanted to put you, you know, in this space, I wanted to put you out in front of a waterfall, let's say. I could photograph you and I could set it up however I wanted, light you, take that on the first sequence. On the second sequence, the, the immediate shot following, I would just photograph the white background, which would create a composite of you. Gotcha. Okay. And because I took the frames, boom, boom, it would be really simple to go into Photoshop later. later. I could outline the composite and I have a perfect mask. Perfect cutout. Exactly. And how quickly can that actually happen, that that first shot to the second shot? It depends how fast your camera's motor drive can go, to be quite honest. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's a recommendation is to set your camera in a high sh you know, shutter rate, go boom, boom as fast as you can so that the subject can't move. Right. If you're hand holding the camera, you know, you're, there's not a lot of camera shake going. Right. Um, and then you'll get really a perfect composite. That's incredible. So what's the actual fastest recycle time on this strobe? The fastest recycle time at full power is going to be 0.9 seconds. However, if you're, wow. you're, you're in the lower end, it's 0 0.05 seconds. Wow, so, so almost instantaneously. Exactly, yeah, it's really quick. And that was really the one thing we wanted to focus on when we are creating the FJ400. That's incredible. So there are basically three parts to this, this strobe unit. Um, why don't you tell me a little bit about this battery? The battery, we put a lot of time and energy in, into this battery. It's a lithium polymer battery. It's got an LED indicator on the back that tells you your power level, mm -hmm. so you always kind of know where you're at there. Um, and it is a true AC-DC battery. Um, what that means is not only you know will it work just as a DC source, right. but if you're in, indoors and you want to use it, you can actually use it on mains as well. Okay. Uh, one step further, as long as there's 25% battery power when you start, charging it, you can actually use the battery, or use the strobe rather, and charge the battery at the same time. Wow. So it'll give okay. it a trickle charge. So tell me a little bit about why you went with a lithium polymer over lithium ion. So lithium polymer is a little bit safer. It's a newer technology okay. than the lithium ion. Um, it's very friendly to fly with. You can generally take two of these with you. You still, you can't check um, okay. these batteries, you still want to carry them on board right. with you if you do go by air travel. Um, but it's it's just a newer technology of, of a battery. Okay, perfect. So it is Bowens mount, correct? That's correct. So we've got a Bowens mount, Bowens S mount, very standard. Um, and if you'll notice on the front uh, side of the uh, reflector that's included, uh, there's four little silver dots and those basically are for magnetic mounts. We okay. include with every uh, FJ400 both single unit and kits, color corrective gels. And so okay. for cor color corrective gels, we do full stop CTO, half stop CTO, uh, window uh, correction green, okay. and then also a frosted or diffusion. A diffusion. Yep, okay. exactly. That's incredible. So Bowen's mount, um, but really kind of, you know, that's the strobe, that's the battery, um, fast recycle time, super color consistent. Right. So we, we advertise uh, plus or minus 150 degrees Kelvin. Wow. And that is not only at the high end, but it's also at the low end. Wow. So sometimes, you know, when other other manufacturers create their strobes, um, if the battery is low or if the power level is low, 
there's that inconsistent color, color changes. That's correct. Absolutely. So we wanted to maintain that from all the way through. Yeah. And something to note on that same topic is the fact that when you have that battery, if it's depleted down to 30% or whatnot, what's the recycle time at that point Still as well? a very quick recycle time. That's a, I'm glad you asked because that 0.9 recycle time uh, reflects highest power of the battery and when it's almost depleted. Wow, that's incredible. So it doesn't actually fluctuate too terribly. That's correct, wow. at, at all. Yeah. Absolutely, fantastic. So 10th um, uh, increments, correct? Yep, yep. You can dial it in by 10th okay. increments. Um, I'm trying to think, you can. there's a delay function if you wanted to you know, put it on a timer and have it, if you're doing a long exposure or something like okay. that, you wanted it to fire after 4.6 seconds or 18.9 seconds, you can be very specific which, okay. with the delay time. Um, of the unit. So. All right. so the biggest thing I think about this whole strobe setup is not actually the strobe. This is incredible. Okay. But the biggest thing about this system is the, the controller. That's correct. So the FJX2M trigger is, is really, like you said, the magic sauce that kind of puts this whole thing together. Um, the X2M trigger has a full color screen that matches exactly what you see. So it, kind of continues that, user, that, feel. that yeah. easy to use user interface. Um, you have you know the ability to control the monitoring lamp from here, your channels that you're on, the type of sync, whether you want front curtain, rear curtain, high speed sync, you have the ability to control yeah. all that right from here. Uh, obviously changing it from manual to TTL right. like you'd expect. Um, one cool feature about this is called a TTL to manual setting. And this is a really neat feature that if you maybe don't have a light meter, but you want to kind of get in the ballpark of what your exposure would right. be, you don't know, you know, it's hard to guess what does 4.5 mean versus 6.2. Right. That's a power level. But if you want to just kind of get a good accurate start, you can throw it into TTL. Okay. And then let's say you're in an environment where maybe the conditions are changing. You're photographing some people with white shirts, some people with black shirts, and okay. you just don't want to trust TTL. You want to right. be locked in. There's a button right here that basically allows you to hold down, um, it's the bottom right button, and you can actually take a frame in TTL, hold this down, and it will give you what the manual output would have been on that last shot. Okay. If you're in the ballpark, you stay where you're at. If you feel like you need to bump exposure or lower exposure, then you just do that. So right it's almost side. like a built-in light meter exactly. directly into that that unit. Exactly. That's incredible. But the best thing about it of all, best thing absolutely, is that this is a universal trigger. And it's not a universal trigger that's only in manual. That's correct. It's a universal trigger with TTL, high speed sync, free sync, and it appeals. All you have to do to change what camera system you're using is press the camera button. And I can shuffle through easily from Nikon to Sony to Fuji, Canon RT because it does also work with Canon RT speed lights, Olympus, Lumix, which is Panasonic, and Canon. That's incredible. So, so it it has six different settings, six speaks, different camera systems. It speaks six different languages. Wow. Absolutely. And then you also throw in the Canon RT speed lights, which a lot of people may want to use this as their main right. and then add those in as fills or kickers or right. what have you. And it can all be triggered from the same That's system. Correct. That's correct. That's incredible. So yeah, and this is really, I mean, it's it, it, if we put ourselves in a situation, when would a universal trigger be smart to use? If we're, you and I are both shooting a right. wedding, maybe you're shooting on Sony and I'm shooting on Canon, or right. what have you, um, we can each have a trigger, we're still and triggering still the using same light. the same flash. Exactly. Also, educational environments where maybe you have... Right. You or know, just studio environments in general. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it's a co-op studio and right. you know you give them the option to, to use a strobe. Well, you don't have to carry... 16 different triggers. You can have right. one. You have one trigger and uh, it's really it's really nice feature. That's so. incredible. Absolutely incredible. So this light and system is absolutely incredible. What is the price point of this? So the price point uh, starting at 569 for the strobe that comes with the battery, comes with the obviously the reflector, a nice hard case to store it in. Um, and then there are also kits that you can kind of okay. build on. All of the kits uh, beyond the 569 price do include this trigger. Okay. If you wanted to buy the trigger a la carte, uh, starts at 99 bucks. And then for Sony users, there's a small adapter right. because their uh, hot shoe is a little, a little bit, bit smaller. smaller. Yep, and that hot shoe for Sony users is 1990. Okay, so. so 100 bucks for the remote, 
And you said how much for 569 this? 569 for this. 569 yep. for this flash. So all in, you're still under 700 bucks. And then incredible. again, we have some kits, you know, some really nice kits. One of my favorite includes a nice travel backpack, includes the strobe, the trigger, and then a 26 inch rapid box, uh, which is our most popular modifier, wow. all for 849 bucks. Wow. In a case. So, Absolutely, yeah. that's incredible. All in, 849 bucks, and you can have everything you need minus a stand, right? That's correct. Perfect. Yeah, but it's light enough to yeah. handhold. Absolutely. In fact, we've, we've done a lot of shots like that. That's so. awesome. Yeah. That's absolutely awesome. So there you have it. That's the FJ400. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and hit like and subscribe to our page. As well as if this is an item that you really want to utilize, go ahead and visit us at bedfords.com or visit us in store to get yours. I'm Luke from Bedford Camera and Video. This is Brandon from Westcott, and we'll catch you next time.